Hi, yes, it's time to look at another USB microscope for soldering work and all that sort of stuff because, well, today's SMD stuff, quite difficult to solder really just by eye. It's really handy to have either an optical or, in this case, a USB microscope. We've got the do-it-yourself in Hong Kong uh, USB microscope. They sent this to me after they saw my uh, previous USB microscope ones, which I'll link in down below. They were the really cheap ones, like the $50 ones. This one, about $240. Full HD, big working distance on a reasonable, uh, decent stand. Same as the Anden Star uh, stand I had before, but we'll have a look at that. And, well, how much, you know, is it any good for $240? Bucks? And we'll also compare it to one that costs 10 times more. Not a fair comparison, but anyway, you can see one of these do-it-yourself uh, hacked ones with the Microsoft uh, Life Cam on it compared to a really professional one. Hey, let's give it a go. So these two ones you've seen in a previous video, I mean, these little things are all over eBay and they're just absolute garbage. Just don't bother with those, right? Um, this And and Star one, we found out in the previous video, this one wasn't bad at all for the, you know, a sub $100 microscope, but it's still not a huge working distance, but at least it was a usable USB microscope, uh, you know, uh, for soldering work and it came with this nice adjustable stand. Well, what do it yourself in Hong Kong have done is they've modified a top of the line uh, full HD Microsoft Life Cam Studio webcam. That's the that's the actual webcam. It actually comes on the with that uh, thing there. They've uh, custom made a, a pretty dodgy looking aluminium bracket on here, but hey, it works. And they've taken one of these stands, same as or well, very similar to the Anden Star one over here. They've modified that, raised it up, and and they've added a custom lens on the front, which we'll take a look at. And the result is a supposedly a full HD USB webcam. It is treated by the PC as a Microsoft Live Cam, so all the drivers are there. It just plugs in instantly. But it's got the additional lens on here, which gives it a 15 centimeter working distance, 150 millimeters. Beautiful. That's what you want for soldering. And it's on a slight angle. You can adjust. The angle, of course, you can have it straight down, but and it's also got a lead lot, custom lead light source on the front. So anyway, um, just the form factor is not bad at all. Pretty much exactly ideal what you want for uh, today's surface mount soldering stuff. So here it is up close. What he's basically done is taken out the Microsoft uh, lens in there and replaced it with a custom lens on the front here which you can't adjust by the way this is all fixed uh, focus and fixed zoom so you only get one zoom level and one uh, focus distance on the thing but I uh, added a board in there with some uh, LED lights as well which work reasonably well on off switch for the uh, LED light but apart from that it's just oh, I put his own sticker on there but apart from that it is just an, a proper Microsoft Life Cam Studio thing it's even got the mic on the top there of course so you could record uh, uh, audio with it. It's, you know, nothing's been modified in that uh, aspect and it's just been bolted onto a custom aluminium frame like this. So you can actually tilt it at an angle like that and use it, but I'm going to use it directly, or most people would use it directly straight down and typically at an angle like that just to sort of move the object you want to work just out from the bottom of the plate here. But anyway, it's not too bad. The adjustment here is really tight. I don't know if it's just my one, but geez, it's, you know, it's not easy to move this up and down, that's for sure. But anyway, you know, it's not bad considering that these are all, uh, you know, custom made and it's only 240 bucks and certainly not made in bulk and it's not a consumer product. It is all handmade. And of course, it's totally unfair, but I will actually compare the output to this Togato, which costs more than 10 times the price of this thing. If you have to ask, don't you can't afford it, probably. Certainly not for hobbies use. This is probably the industry's best uh, professional full HD, uh, 1920 by 1080, 60 frames per second. Fantastic, low light. It's got full zoom. Check this out, just absolutely insane. 30 times zoom. It's got direct HDMI output for the monitor, so I'm getting that updated at 60 times per second. 
on there. Fantastic, just brilliant. And it's got USB 3.0 to stream to a PC as well. Unfortunately, I haven't got this fully working recording on the PC because I need a much more powerful PC to seamlessly record. Full HD at 60 frames per second, and I'm working on that, and I'll do a future video on that. But anyway, um, yeah, no contest whatsoever because this thing just allows me to zoom from, you know, that right in to 30 times optical zoom. Just absolutely incredible. And I'm displaying that on a 24-inch monitor at 60 frames per second. Oh, this thing's just gorgeous. But what do you get for, you know, 240 odd bucks? Is it any good? Unfortunately, see, the problem is this Tagano microscope connects directly to a HDMI monitor, direct HDMI output on there. So there's no need for a PC, no lag or anything like that. It just works on a monitor. Absolutely brilliant. Can't be beat. Unfortunately, these type of USB microscopes have to go through a PC. So the update rate is going to depend on the speed of your PC and the amount of light you get and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, let's plug it in, give it a try. Oh, by the way, do it yourself in Hong Kong. Uh, not only sell the full one as you see here, but they sell just the mod kit as well, i.e. just the lens and the little lead board. So you can, if you've got your own uh, LifeCam Studio webcam, you can hack it for only 50 bucks. So that's good value. And because it's important, you need to know what PC I'm running this on. This is the most powerful one I've got in the lab here at the moment until I get a new dedicated PC for the Tagano uh, microscope. So I may revisit this in the future once I get a better PC. But this one is certainly no slouch as far as uh, notebooks are concerned. I used to do all my HD video editing on here. It's a HP DV7 model, dual disk, uh, solid state hard drive for the Windows uh, 7 operating system, Intel Core i7 Pro processor running at 2 gig I believe it is or 2.2 or something like that um, Intel Radeon uh, graphics card it's a 6770M chipset for the mobile chipset yeah it's not you know huge big gamer machine but hey you know it's it's certainly no slouch that's for sure running uh, Windows 7 64 bit pro so you know it, it's gonna it's a reasonable machine that people might have around for this sort of use and please forgive me for filming the screen directly. I couldn't be bothered setting up my video capture for this um, screen capture. Anyway, it meets the requirements uh, in the Microsoft LifeCam uh, specs here for 720p HD recording. You know, it only needs 2 gig of RAM. Intel dual core 3 gig. Well, I've got a, uh, you know, a quad core uh, 2 gig, but I've also, you know, 2 meg or higher video memory. I've got at least a, a AMD Radeon uh, 6770M chipset, so it should be okay. And here's the trick, here's the specs. I mean, it, yes, it is full HD, 1920 by 1080, right? But uh, up to 30 frames per second up to in quote marks, okay? So it's going to vary, and remember this is only USB 2. Okay, the Tagano has USB 3 through it for a reason because it's trying to get full HD at 60 frames per second and it does it. So USB 2, oh, we're struggling. Anyway, I've got it plugged in to a USB 3 port so there should be absolutely no issues there at all. And the driver side of things, you just plug it in and auto installs. Uh, it comes up as a Microsoft LifeCam Studio which is, of course, exactly what it is. Now, just as a bit of a benchmark here, I will show you the Tagano microscopes first. So I'm using uh, UCAM 6 software, which is pretty much the fastest uh, capture program I've been able to find here. And you can see it does update. Uh, the Tagano is only outputting in full HD at 60 frames per second, as I said. So that, look, that is absolutely beautiful, but I can't record that, unfortunately. So if I hit that record button there, it's all going to go to buggery. But as you can see, the display updating, so this hardware, this notebook, oh, there we go, it just froze. It does freeze occasionally, but then it should come back. So this hardware I'm using, this notebook, is capable of actually at least uh, bringing in that data at that's 60 frames per second and updating the screen. There we go, it's jerked. It seems that, oh, there we go, it's come back good again. So I'm not exactly sure what the exact issue there. Well, the machine's obviously not quick enough, but it should be more than enough for the full HD 30 frames per second we're going to get on the do-it-yourself in Hong Kong one. 
So let's switch to the device, and by the way, that glare I was getting on there, that wasn't an issue with the Tagano, that's actually my overhead uh, lab lights here actually doing that. I can cover it, there you go, you can see, so that's not the true uh, lighting performance of the, of the Tagano. So as you can see, the Tagano is only available in one resolution, full resolution, 60 frames per second, no other options whatsoever, but we can now choose our Microsoft LifeCam Studio, and wham, we're in. Look at that. We're in like Flynn. There's our watch. And as you can see, it's, well, that's the best, <laughs> that we only have one zoom level here. And this is the first issue with this thing. Microcurrent board, but look at that, right? The zoom level is is pretty good. I mean, that's that's more than good enough for doing most SMD work, but it is fixed. So if I raise this thing up and there's not like another focal distance there at all, um, it's just the one fixed level. That's it. There's no zoom whatsoever. But that working distance there is about 140 millimeters, so close to the claimed 150 millimeters. This is the other thing I found. I couldn't get the focus by having something flat on my bench there. Let's, I'll put a blank board on there and see if we can focus on it. So what I've got is one of my micro rulers down there. I've got it on minimum absolute. Uh, that's the other thing. You can't just, my one, as I said, a little bit stiff. So I've got to hold that when I'm doing it. But I've got it on the lowest setting, at lowest height, right down there. And if you take a look, it can't actually focus on that. So that is a real issue. It can't, it's that minimum height needs to be just a little bit more. I've got to raise that up before I actually get that in focus. I've got to raise that up about 10, 15 millimeters before it starts getting within the focus range. And they claim that the depth of field is about 10 millimeters. And well, I think that's about right. I'm lifting that up and down there. And the depth of field, of course, the depth of field is defined as where you, you know, lose focus point well in in this case we'll define it as sort of where we lose focus so I can adjust the height of that by about 10 millimeters and it still stays in focus so that's pretty good actually 10 millimeters depth of field is pretty excellent for something like this and what that means in practice is that when you've got large components like this the top of the component is still in focus and the bottom uh, board the bottom component down there is also in focus so you really need a good depth of field there's nothing worse than a microscope like this with a very what's called shallow depth of field only a couple of millimeters it's really horrid so this one is really good in that respect almost ideal for surface mount soldering this is actually really good really clear very nice quality and we'll check to see if there's any ed edge distortion here the way you can do that is just get your square board of course and well does it look square is it does it like barrel up like that or concave in like that is there any distortion no um in fact i'm that's not a true test because i've got this one at an angle you can see that's not the case but if i point it straight down and put it in there yep no problems whatsoever there's no distortion on this thing so it's a very nice webcam and of course the add-on optics it's all about those add-on optics and well they do a really good job no distortion there very clear image i love it so there you have it i've zoomed that out to full screen and well that is very very usable that's probably an ideal sort of uh, magnification there as i said you can't adjust it but that's good enough for most smd soldering these are tiny little uh six pin sot 23 packages so hey that's good enough i really like it it's quite optimized for smd soldering and there's various resolutions available here but i've had that set to full hd so 1920 by 1080 and the update rate that's not too bad at all really that is yeah, that, I think that's going to be pretty usable for soldering. I like it. So there's my stopwatch at full uh, 1080p there. And I'm recording in full HD now using the internal mic on the LifeCam studio device. And I've turned off, as you can see, I've turned off the internal LED light there. And I really actually like it under my studio lights here. That's not bad. I think I'm getting about 600 lux or something on the bench at the moment. I'm getting about 530 odd lux there. If I switch my uh, 
studio lights off here and I'm just using regular office lights I'm down to about 300 lux which is sort of you know really quite dim that is I would consider that quite low light and the quality I'll press record here here we go so we'll get a direct output from that and the quality is pretty good even at that low light I'm pretty impressed by that Now I'll show you the difference in the video capture programs. I'm now using uh, the Australian software NCH Debut Video Capture. And curiously, when I selected the full HD, it said it could only do like five frames per second. I'm not sure why, but look, yeah, that is like, you know, look at that, jello, woo, that is really... Yeah, five frames per second, that's awful, but that is using the exact same LifeCam driver that we were using before with that UCAM 6 software. And there it is, it's telling me only five frames per second. Absolutely awful. That software is hopeless. Now, I'm using the recommended Virtual Dub software, which Do It Yourself in Hong Kong actually recommend. And, uh, well, we've got our Tagano software at the moment. Let's shift on over to our Microsoft life cam and there we go no problems whatsoever and it's telling us bingo 30 frames per second not an issue at all now you may not be able to uh, read it at the moment but there it is it's telling us 30 frames per second and yeah it looks like i'm truly getting 30 frames per second updating on the screen there but if i switch my studio lights off Bingo, gone, the camera's probably uh, compensating, not constant uh, exposure. It's dropped down to 15 frames per second, and you really start to see that on the screen as well. So light matters, but if we switch the, uh, the internal light back on, bam, we're up to back up to 30 frames per second now using the internal light. So that internal light actually works really well. And let's try that one again. Now I'm recording, once again, UCAM 6 uh, Full HD using my Samson Go mic here on the desktop and uh, once again it's that minimum focus uh, sorry that minimum uh, height there that's getting me that height adjustment I can bring it into focus now there we go the uh, auto exposure seems to work really well but if I lay that board down flat on there like that it's just it's just not working so yeah I mean you know it's not a huge issue it's just the uh, height of the stand really the adjustment uh, range of the stand but I think that's really that's really quite nice all right here we go I'm going to do a live soldering test I've got a 0.65 millimeter pitch I see here as you can see I've put some uh, flux down on the pads down here and no I haven't practiced at all I'm not in an ideal position as always with these soldering tutorials this one could completely blow up in my face but anyway I am going to attempt to I'll probably do it on rotate around I'm going to attempt to do this just looking at the main screen here so I'm not actually going to be looking at what I'm doing down I'm going to uh, be looking directly at the job through the monitor so let's give it a go here we go I'm going to apply some solder to my tip here I'm going to do a bit of drag soldering I haven't uh, or probably drag out. I haven't actually uh, tacked any of the corners down yet. So here we go. As always with these soldering tutorials, I could completely embarrass myself. Oh, didn't have enough. I should tack one pin down, so I'm not following my own rules here. I should certainly do that, but I haven't. I'm just going to solder this chip directly while trying to hold it in place there we go now we're now we're talking sizzle 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 there we go drag out that one in that one's not going there we go i got him i got him well that's stuck down anyway maybe i can do the other side now Probably got too much flux on there now and here we go all right 
going to drag out from the chip. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. Now we're talking. Once again, the biggest problem with this microscope is that you have to raise it off. You have to raise the thing off the uh, off the bench, which is pretty silly. There we go. It it's not the best. We're getting like um you know blowing highlights or something. I should pro I could probably manually adjust the uh, brightness and intensity of this thing. But anyway, I've soldered that 0.6 millimeter pitch. It's not very ugly because this isn't the world's best soldering tutorial and the light let me switch off the light there there we go there we go you can see that it's not too bad but yeah i mean with 30 frames per second updating you can easily see that directly on the screen and do your soldering so i'm sure you'd have no problems doing 0.5 millimeter pitch and stuff like that so this works just fine for soldering not a problem whatsoever and for those curious to know about the duck's guts, the bee's knees, the Tagano FHD, well, we're talking about a working height here, fixed working height of 23 centimetres, 230 millimetres, with a field of view, maximum field of view of, well, at uh, minimum zoom of 27 centimetres. And if you zoom right in on that, ta-da, in we go, in we go, in we go, in we go, in we go. Look at that. That is ridiculous. That is 12, almost, yeah, 12 millimeters field of view. Unbelievable. And I'm recording the monitor at the moment, so forgive the quality, but this is a full HD monitor, and uh, that is maximum zoom out like that, and full zoom in. Well, let's go. Yes, it is auto uh, focus, auto adjustment, uh, auto uh, brightness, iris adjustment, everything like that. So look at that. You can see inside that RGB LED there. That's auto exposure mode. It's got like an f1.6 lens, I believe, on the thing. And uh, oh, there we go. I can adjust the gain. F1.6. There it is. I can lower the Look, look at that. That is just fantastic. It really is. And if I turn off the light, that's in my lab lights here. And if I go even lower, down to that 300 lux, look at that. That is recording with no light, full HD, 60 frames per second, uh, in 300 lux of light in the lab here, which is quite dark. And, well... I can, I'm struggling to see any grain on that. I, I can just start to see it, but wow. So that's a little look at this uh, do-it-yourself in Hong Kong USB soldering microscope. And I, I think it pretty much lives up to its claim. I've, I had no real major issues with this at all. Even with my, you know, not really high-end uh, notebook or modern, it's a, you know, a year or a couple of years old, I was able to get... 30 frames per second full HD no problems at all and actually record it and I had no lag problems using it uh, soldering or whatever so it is yeah it does the job and the working distance is you know enormous and that's exactly what you want for soldering like this and the field of view would have been nice to have a zoom on it of course but hey you know you can't have everything but uh, the field of view I think is good enough for just general purpose SMD soldering, probably down to, you know, 0402's, 0.5 millimeter pin pitch, stuff like that, should handle that. Of course, <laughs> this thing, this uh, Tagano is absolutely incredible. Nothing beats uh, that full HD live updating on the monitor at 60 frames per second. But this thing does the business for 240 odd dollars. Excellent. I think I'd recommend that, certainly over those uh, USB microscopes we saw uh, before, just purely for the working distance. Um, you know, there's no contest whatsoever. Image quality is great. I don't know. For the price, can't fold it. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that uh, look at this. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EV blog forum. Links are down below. Catch you next time.